In this video, we're gonna take a look at some of the top five nutrition myths that are out there. Let's get started. Number one, oh my God, fruit. It has sugar in it. That's gonna increase our blood sugar and it's gonna give us diabetes. You can't eat fruit, it's toxic. Okay, obviously I'm exaggerating a bit here, but this is something I see a lot online. People saying that fruit is unhealthy. And as a nutritionist, I find this incredibly strange because fruit is literally one of the healthiest foods we can eat. But to get into this claim a little bit more, it is true that we don't wanna be eating a lot of refined sugar. This is in a lot of processed foods. We know that this isn't necessarily the best thing for our health. We wanna be focusing more on whole foods. But obviously, depending on your diet and energy needs, as an athlete, maybe you need more energy dense foods. But for the average person, it's good to be focusing on whole foods. The thing with fruit is it isn't just sugar. It's what is called a food matrix. There's not just sugar in a fruit, there's water, there's fiber, there's other nutrients. And this actually changes the way that our body digests and absorbs the food. It slows down our digestion, it slows down that rise and fall in blood sugar and gives us more longer sustained energy. The thing is that a recommended intake of fruit and vegetables is actually associated with significantly lower risk of diabetes. So the people that are talking about fruit being unhealthy, to put it simply, they're not making evidence-based recommendations. They don't know what they're talking about. But it is important to give context as well, that if we juice a fruit, for example, we're removing this fiber and we're processing it into a different form. So drinking fruit juice every day might not be as good as eating whole fruit because it doesn't have the fiber and other nutrients in the food matrix that's gonna give us this healthy blood sugar response. So my recommendation is to mostly focus on eating whole fruits. Number two, detox, diet are removing these toxins from our body and we need to take supplements or do specific protocols to release these toxins from our body and to make us healthy again. And I can understand why this is incredibly appealing. If we're sick, we have health issues and we wanna get better, we're more likely to listen to people that are selling us a specific solution. And it can be tempting to wanna to try extreme things to get rid of toxins in our body, but it's important to understand that there's no food that you can eat and there's no supplement that you can take that's going to detox you. This is just a misunderstanding of basic human physiology. In our body, we have different organs, such as our liver and kidneys, that help to filter our blood, and actually, these are the organs that are responsible for detoxing, if you even wanna use that word. So these are the organs that are going to help us to detox. So taking a certain food or a supplement to remove toxins from our body, it's just not how our bodies work. But there are things that we can do to support these organs of elimination. Eating enough fiber, eating whole foods, the fiber in these whole foods are going to help to clear out things like secondary bile acid and help to promote healthy bowel movements to actually get everything moving and to help our body to get rid of waste that it no longer needs. There's also certain nutrients like selenium, which is part of the master antioxidant in our body, glutathione. So eating enough selenium in our diet, which you can get by just having one Brazil nut per day, can help us to support our liver function, for example. So when it comes to detox, if you want to call it that, it's all about supporting our body, not trying to eat or do restrictive protocols to detox. Just focus on the basics, eat a healthy, balanced diet, and your body will take care of the rest. Because our bodies are incredibly intelligent and they've evolved for millions and millions of years to be able to survive and do what they need to do. Number three, gluten is toxic and inflammatory. It's gonna kill you. Okay, again, I have to put on a little bit of exaggeration to make it interesting, but the thing is, I've seen this again a lot online. People saying that gluten is incredibly toxic and inflammatory, and it maybe is gonna kill you. But the thing is, there's a bit more nuance here. This is for people with celiac disease. This is an autoimmune condition where if you have it, you literally cannot have gluten because your body will have a very dangerous response. The prevalence is about 1% of the population, so it is relatively common, but it's not super common. There might also be other people who are sensitive to gluten and maybe prefer to avoid it. But the thing is here, like everything, we want to focus on quality. Think about this. What about wholemeal, beautiful, fermented sourdough versus white bread from the supermarket? These both contain gluten, but they're very, very different foods. I'd recommend focusing on more whole, less processed forms of gluten and things like sourdough that are naturally fermented so they're easier on our digestion and the nutrients are more bioavailable and easier for our bodies to absorb rather than things like white bread which are highly, highly processed. 
And if you really prefer to avoid gluten, by all means continue to eliminate it. But you might find that you can handle things like a nice sourdough, and it's really a great way to add more nutrition into our diet. I love baking my own sourdough at home, so it's something that I'm very passionate about. So stop talking smack about gluten, okay? It's not necessarily gluten itself, it's the form that we're getting it in. Number four, that fat's unhealthy. This is a big confusion in our society. I know it's kind of before my time, but it still continues today, the whole low fat thing that eliminating fats is beneficial for our health. And this was actually based on good science where we know that eating excess amounts of saturated fat can increase our risk of heart disease. But it got taken a little bit out of proportion going to all fats together and it became a marketing thing and a way to make money. And a lot of people are very confused about it. But it's actually important to understand that there are certain fats that our bodies need, the essential fatty acids, called that way for a reason. <laughs> Things like the omega-6 linoleic acid and the omega-3 alpha linoleic acid. Also the longer chain forms of that. EPA and DHA. They're really important for maintaining our brain health, our cardiovascular health, the health of our skin, the integrity of all of the cells in our body. So fats are actually very important and essential for our body. But we want to be focusing mostly on unsaturated fats from plant foods. Things like olives, avocados, nuts and seeds. I live in the south of France where they've been making olive oil for thousands of years. Things like this are really beneficial for our health. And diets like the Mediterranean diet that are rich in these essential fats are consistently shown to have favorable health outcomes. But we don't want to eat things like trans fats. These are in processed foods and we very clearly know that they are not good for us. They really elevate our risk of cardiovascular disease, for example. Number five is that organic foods are always healthier. And I've done a whole video on this if you want to check it out and learn more, but the truth is that while some organic foods might be higher in things like polyphenols, which are beneficial for our gut health and our brain health potentially, Overall, just eating enough fruit and vegetables from any source is incredibly beneficial for our health. Most of us are just not eating enough of these foods. Focusing on more whole plant foods, whether organic or non-organic, is incredibly beneficial for our health. It's amazing if you can access organic food and you have the budget to do so, but not all of us do. And I don't want you to be worried about eating produce that's not organic because this is also incredibly beneficial for our health. And I personally would love to buy organic, but I just don't have the money to do so. And I know a lot of you out there are the same. So please eat more whole plant foods, more fruit and veggies, and don't worry about whether they're organic or not. Again, if you wanna learn more, I've got a video on this topic that answers a lot of the common questions and everything that you might wanna know. So I hope this has helped you, the five common nutrition myths, given a little bit more context to some of the things you might see online and might find confusing. If I've missed anything out or you wanna know more, please comment below and I'll get back to you. If you've enjoyed this video, please feel free to give it a like and subscribe for more evidence-based nutrition content to help you create a healthy relationship with your food. If you're interested in diving deeper into nutrition, check out this video where I shared the top five things that I've learned as a nutritionist to help you on your journey to understanding the seemingly confusing world of nutrition science to make healthier choices to live a long and healthy life. See you soon and stay healthy.